and just an elevator ride away, the Showbiz Lounge with spectacular stage shows, the After Dark Piano Bar, Atlantic City's famous Eminem Disco, and right on the premises, Club Baths Atlantic City. Keep good memories with good music. You'll find it at Happy Tunes. Happy Tunes, 53 West 8th Street, in the village. Letters to Donald Wyndham in the October Poetry and Art issue of Christopher Street. Christopher Street, on sale now at your local newsstand. Good evening, I'm Marianne Collega. We're privileged in having with us this evening Gene O'Leary, one of the most influential gay leaders nationally, co-executive director of the National Gay Task Force, and Needless to say, an untiring activist in feminist and democratic politics. How are you, Jean? Oh, I'm fine. Thank you. That's good. Jean, can you tell me a little bit about the White House meetings that you've uh, had held last March uh, with Ms. Costanza? Sure. Um, they were very productive, and they're uh, an ongoing uh, series of meetings. The first meeting that we had was, um, it was good because it was symbolic, and uh, we had a lot of national coverage television and uh, newsprint. And uh, I think it did a lot for raising the status of the gay movement in general across the country. But beyond being just symbolic, it has a lot of, um, of, of meat to it in a sense. And that is that uh, we've been promised meetings with all the federal agencies that the White House has influence with. And we've, uh, to date, had meetings now since that time with the um, Justice Department with immigration and naturalization, and that's been a series of about three meetings, and we're going back with the Civil Rights Commission, and we plan to have it with the Defense Department, HEW, HUD, and uh, several others. So I think that uh, what's happening is we're developing a network of friends <clears throat> on a federal level, and we go in there and we start talking about the gay issue, and people come in there are very hesitant, and they just don't really know what to expect. And when we start telling people about the real discrimination that gay people face and also the advances that the gay movement has made, they become fascinated. And we actually have a following, in a sense now, of, of people who go from meeting to meeting with us and very influential people. People like um, Pat Wald, who's Assistant uh, Attorney General in the Justice Department, um, Leonel Castillo, who is the head of Immigration and Naturalization and some of their chief aides from the, uh, both departments. Midge Costanza, of course, who is the assistant to uh, Carter for public liaison, and uh, Marilyn Half, who is on her staff. People like this are, who are really very sincere about their commitment to us and to the gay movement are helping us. We're, they're opening up doors that have never been opened to us before. So you certainly feel like a lot of progress has been made and is being made to... Uh, Tremendous amount, yeah. ...to further legislation. <clears throat> Very good. Um, Jean, you've been appointed by President Carter as federal commissioner to the International Women's Year Conference, and you're going off to Houston in November. Can you tell me a little bit about that, the primary goals and expectations and what's well, going on there? The, the goals of the conference itself are to eliminate the barriers that exist to women in this country our barriers to progress, our barriers to equality. Uh, Bella Abzug passed some legislation where she got five million dollars which enabled people throughout the country to hold state meetings on a state-by-state -state basis. Mm -hmm. And this, this is going to be culminating now in Houston. And we're going to uh, have 2,000 delegates there who have been elected from, you know, throughout the country. And we're going to vote on women's issues. And of course our issue the lesbian issue, the gay issue is going to be there, and only after a lot of really hard work because we were not included in the beginning. The first commission was appointed by President Ford, and it was a very conservative commission. And what they did was not only not include us, they, uh, they voted to exclude us. And then when Carter took office and I was appointed to the commission and Bella Abzug was heading up the commission, things changed radically. And uh, now the issue has been included, but you know to get that 
uh, done throughout the states was also a major task, too. But lesbians really rallied to the cause around the country, and we've passed um, resolutions on gay rights in 34 states, 34 of the 50 states. And uh, those were the states, I think it was only defeated in three or four. And those are basically the states where it was brought up. It's been, um, it's been great. <laughs> I think, I'm just thinking, you know, of Anita Bryant because um, <laughs> really she was kind of like the key that just changed the whole tide for International Women's Year, uh -huh. all the right wingers. Um, as soon as they came out and started attacking us and saying the things that they were saying, they were so ridiculous that most of the, the, the general women's movement, mm, they sometimes they're with us and sometimes they're a little back and forth. Right. Well, they came on so strong, and they're so solidly behind us now. They really mobilized them. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I can't say everybody, but right. it's more that than, than not. And just recently, I was reading an article. As a matter of fact, this article was uh, sent out to all the commissioners, where it said that the, Klu the grand imperial wizard, I guess, of the Ku Klux Klan had said that uh, they're going to be down in Houston. They've been infiltrating the women's meetings um, on, this, on the Houston conference, and that their men are going to be there to protect their women against the militant lesbians <gasps> who have been um, attacking their women on the state levels. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. But I'm thinking about hiring a bodyguard. <laughs> yeah, speaking of infiltration, just, just to sort of interject something here about Anita Bryant or, um, and her constituencies. Um, on Thursday, uh, the 22nd, the show is taped in advance, as our viewers know, but the Motel on the Mountain is opening up a gay resort uh, on Thursday, the 22nd. And I'm going this evening uh, to the opening party, and they plan on having picketing and boycotting and every such thing up there and I stuff in yeah. New York, which I find very uh, disconcerting. And um, I just don't know what we can do about it except try to educate these people. And well, you can't educate the people, those, those people. I really don't think so. I mean, this is a hard core of fanatics. Yeah, Rockland, Westchester County. And uh, I think that, um, oh, well, I'm, I'm speaking about the right wing people. Mm -hmm. I, I think that what we've got to do for tonight, for instance, for the opening of the uh, motel, is just beef up the security. Now, we can't say gay people stay home. We can't try to educate those people in time. I mean, it's like saying well, women stay home because you might be raped. You know, we have every right to go anywhere we want to go. And if they come out and they, they start picketing that hotel or, or starting um, some kind of violent demonstration, I think that what we have to do, and what the owners of that hotel have to be prepared to do, is to have the security there to protect uh, the gay population and to try to keep uh, the whole atmosphere as calm as possible. Because these people, uh, some of them are just, uh, are, are very crazy and you don't know what they're going to come up with. Yeah, next. I think in terms of security, uh, you're probably right, because if we did, uh, for example, have Anita Bryant and her constituencies, chances are at least at best it would be a little more organized. With these rednecks, one really knows not, you know, what to expect. We, don't, we have no idea would there be uh, you know, any violence at all. But, uh, yeah, it's, well, prob it's probably just a small group, and I also think a lot of these things get very blown up. Yeah. I, we give them more credibility, in a sense, because we give more um, um, influence to them because of their, you know, they're, they really are not that great in number. They're the right. radical, hardcore right, right wing. When you say radical nowadays, you're really talking about the right wing. Right. It's amazing how the pendulum has just swung in the past couple of years, and I think that we are heading towards some very conservative times in this country. And the people who are uh, on the uh, fringe of that are the radicals, are the right wing radicals, the crazy people. Right. In terms of gay legislation, now that the new administration is coming in with Ed Koch and Carol Bellamy, and incidentally, I went to her victory celebration. It was an astronomical turnout. Just wonderful, warm-spirited feeling. Uh, what Wasn't do you think? It? Yeah, it was great. Were you there? Oh, I sure was. Uh, I, Carol Bellamy, I was, I was with her from the very, very beginning. Uh -huh. She was my absolute favorite, and I'm just so thrilled. I mean, it was... I really didn't think in the beginning she was going to win, but I wanted her to win. Oh, yeah. I did also. And uh, then to have her come from behind like that and just, oh, what was it, a 20% margin, I think? Uh, yeah, I think it she came to 59-41 against O'Dwyer and such a low-budgeted campaign. I mean, it goes to show, you yeah. know, you can do it, really. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think, we, I think we have a very good chance for the legislation immediately, and I, I want it immediately. You know, right. Yeah. They said within 10 days, Koch said within 10 days he's going to sign it in, and it's all bottled up, but he's going to well, do it and get it. No, I, I, don't think, uh, I don't think he can do that. Um, I hope 
he's going to do it as quickly as possible, but mm. it has to move through the city council. And I think that uh, our first step has to be getting the, the general welfare committee reconstituted or getting that bill passed out of the general welfare committee, whether it's reconstituted or not. That's, that's step one. And onto the floor, because we do have the votes, I, I'm almost positive now, on the floor. And with the backing of the mayor, and I'm sure Ed Koch is going to back it, and mm -hmm. with Carol Bellamy and the city council, I don't see how we can lose. And for me, it's just <clears throat> a matter of time. And as I said, the sooner the better. We've been waiting so long. Yeah. I just really hope that this is going to be a different city, not just in terms of the gay issue, but in terms of you know, many issues. I'm very, very excited about this administration. Mm -hmm. I feel very, very good. Yeah, I feel proud to be living in also. New York. Incidentally, how long have you been involved with the National Gay Task Force? And uh, with the National Gay Task Force, I've been involved, uh, let's see, about uh, three years. I've been on the staff as co-executive director for two years, and previous to that I was on the board of directors for one year. I understand the National Gay Task Force is the largest gay civil rights organization in the country, and they're having a, their fourth anniversary somewhere right. around October. It's yeah. exciting. Yes, it's just a, it's a blossoming organization. It's just, the, just beginning, but we're built on rock. I mean, we really have such a solid, solid foundation. And um, a lot of people trust the National Gay Task Force and in the, you know, for the long haul, for the long pull. We're not just an organization that sort of springs up and then uh, you know, is going to disappear. I, I think that we're, uh, in some senses, only not so maybe conservatively, but uh, we're like the NAACP, in a sense, or the uh, American Civil Liberties Union. That really is our model. Mm -hmm. And we're going out now to form state organizations around the country. Our first one will be in Chicago. And we're thinking about even doing one in New York. It's so funny to be based here in New York as a national organization and thinking about starting um, uh, a branch office in New York. But we really do need it because we are here and we're working on a national level. And a lot of times people say to us, you know, how come you're not more involved in like uh, the city council bill? Or how come you're not endorsing candidates or involved in New York City politics? And we really can't be because we are a national organization. But we feel a great need for that. And so therefore, we've been thinking about starting a branch here in New York just to deal with the local politics. I mean, myself as an individual, I'm tremendously involved in that. But as the organization, um, we can't take, for instance, we just cannot endorse candidates. Mm -hmm. And um, I know in New York Magazine it was mentioned that we should be out there leading the way and carrying the banner and saying, everybody vote for whoever. And it's a, it would be a disaster for us to do that because any political organization is basically nonpartisan because we're working on the gay issue. And whoever is in office, we have to work with whoever is there. And if we start endorsing and alienating some people, and um, we would become very ineffective. We have to work with whoever is in office, and therefore that's why we don't endorse. Now, I, myself as an individual, I do endorse people. Mm -hmm. And I have to separate that and make that uh, distinction there. Yeah. Just uh, very briefly, a couple of, um, well, one Carter quote in particular about uh, abortion, just, just briefly, that he says, Some, not everything is fair, or something to that effect, or not all things are fair in life. What's your feeling about that, your gut reaction? I thought Carter it was terrible. I like couldn't that. believe that uh, he said that. I mean, you know, it was just outrageous. It was absolutely outrageous and uncalled for. I mean, and, we knew he uh, was against abortion, but we, I didn't realize that he would uh, operate so de definitively and so decisively, and uh, uh, mm -hmm. like no Medicaid funds for abortion is totally absurd to bring in criminalized abortion, and it's, it's totally discriminatory against uh, poor women, I feel. is. Do you share that feeling? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. It's, not, it's no question about it. But uh, I don't know what we're going to do about that. I mean, he is, obviously his mind is made up solidly on it. Mm -hmm. That's one of the issues that will be brought up at the uh, International Women's Year conference in Houston. And you see, everything that we come out with, our recommendations, will then go to Carter, and he has to respond to it. The law calls for him to respond to it within 22 days. Mm -hmm. And we will be including the abortion issue. So we'll see, you know, maybe. I, I don't know. I'm not uh, hoping for a lot of movement on that. But. Right. Well, Gene, we're running a little bit short, but I appreciate your time, and I know how hard you've been working, and I, on behalf of Emerald City, myself, I thank you. Continue the good work. Thank you. Pleasure. Nice being here.
slipping, slipping, slipping into Wouldn't you like to get out of the city once in a while? Are you tired of the same old places, the same old faces? Wouldn't you like a place that wasn't too far away, but just far enough? A place where movies are shown twice a week, where you can play pool or pinball with friends or just friendly strangers. If this sounds like your kind of place, make headway for Billy the Kid in Jackson Heights, Queens. Take the BMT to 76th Street. We're located directly under the L at 7607 Roosevelt Avenue in Jackson Heights. Billy the Kid, come on. gentlemen, <laughs> whatever you brought with you. Hiya, George. Oh, look who's here tonight. Oh, who's watching the store? But you know, really, I, I do want to welcome you to uh, the show. And for those of you who are not familiar with me, or maybe I have not been familiar, well, maybe you don't know me. Uh, my name is Lynn Carter. Uh, Mr. Lynn Carter, there's somebody else around town. But uh, <laughs> who gives a rat's ass? Anyway, but... <laughs> Evidently, she does, but I don't know where she's been all these years. I know where I've been. But, <laughs> but really, we would do want to welcome you. And uh, I am an impressionist, among other things, and we'd like to do some impressions for you this evening. And in doing them, we certainly hope to create one right on you. Um, <laughs> that didn't come out right either, did it? But uh, I do want to say another thing. I try to look decent for you. I really do. Uh, I really don't look bad if you squint and there's a lot of smoke in the room. Try it. <laughs> See? Wonderful. I tell you. <laughs> oh, God, it isn't easy. You don't know how hard I had to work on this face before you even see it. It's, it's really unbelievable. It, well, about an hour and a half. I beat it and beat it and beat my face, that is. And we explain everything here so we don't lose anybody. And, um, well, we're used to playing the hinterlands, honey. It is <laughs> kind of fun to be back in the big, uh, big uh, hello in the Big Apple where you don't have to lay it out uh, too much. Anyway, uh, but uh, really it is, I, I beat it and when it sticks to the wall, it's done. <laughs> you know, it is not easy turning a little old man into a little old lady every night. <laughs>